What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Liberate Your Money, episode 44. Um, it's been about a week since I did my last video. Um, we talked about Bitcoin. We talked about, uh, oh, let's see, where were we at on our chart? A week ago, we were, let's see, we were looking at the three day chart mainly. Um, we were just starting this candle. We had wicked in our three-day candle We were hoping to get this candle to close above this yellow line as you can see it clearly didn't um, And when it closed we got a sharp bounce up and then we dumped back below it and This next three-day candle actually shot us below uh, the wedge and then closed below the wedge so now we are sitting kind of in limbo like right at the bottom of this little order block here right that we would expect to be support which it is acting as support but like look there's no wick down here at all like that's kind of scary to me but it's also like like this is the next logical level of support or like even down here at like 51 but price didn't make it that far and it's it's kind of just stuck in this range from here to all-time high and as you can see we kind of deviated on this all-time high and then we came back into this range here and now we're just like sitting on support kind of in limbo not really but like and we're below this wedge trend line so like it looks super ugly and in my last video we were talking about how you know we were up here like this could we could fill out the rest of this wedge and end up testing this blue line and that's basically what we did I mean if you zoom in we didn't really test it from where I've drawn the line but it's pretty close and like I said it's kind of scrunched in between support of this range and below this this wedge trend line so it's like a really it doesn't look good right I mean there's my whole Twitter feed has been so bearish everybody thinks the bull markets over um, people are sitting in cash and look I'm sitting in the most cash I've ever been in this whole cycle because I you know I'm just protecting myself I actually bought some alts this morning and we're gonna talk about some of those alts in the video but for now like I think this is a good buy up. I know I was kind of saying that last video, like we're getting towards the end of that wedge, getting closer to this blue trend line, which equals a buy opportunity for me. But at the same time, like I'm sitting in a bunch of cash, I'm being cautious. So like if this trend line breaks, you know, I'm expecting us to come down to this 47K. That's like the major monthly level. You know, if we go below that, all bets are off. And it's like, this really looks bad. And, you know, maybe maybe we fall back into um this range and uh this broader range is how i would put it <gasps> let's remove some drawing things here and i would call this broader range uh here eliminate those i would call the broader range here to here and your midpoint being, you know, somewhere around here, right? So if we look at this, from from the time we went parabolic, you can see, boom, once we hit this consolidation here and bounced up here, topped up here, came down and found a floor at this same consolidation area, we established the range, right? This was the range. So that's why we have this line, this line, the mid is just about in between and you can see it acted as resistance and came back here acted as support we flipped it bounced up this acted as resistance we broke above it came back tested it as support and it broke through so to me that means this starts to look like a deviation we fell back into the range it's very possible that maybe we just range you know what if what if this comes all the way down here, comes back down here, and then we retest, you know, and do something like that? Like, that would be max pain, you know? 
don't want to see that, but like at the same time, it very well could. You know, maybe, maybe the super cycle means that we don't get insane 60, 70% drops, but we do get these 50% drops where we consolidate, you know, maybe it's something like that. I don't know. Um, so I just got to be cautious, right? Like we broke back down, we deviated at an all time high and now we're back into the range. So we got to be cautious. Is this a buying opportunity? Absolutely. I think so because we're sitting on this trend line. Um, you know, until that breaks and we fall below it, then we got to reevaluate our plan. Right now I'm long Bitcoin, um, very low margin. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm actually, you know, I've got buy orders down to 47K expecting us to dip. You know, I don't have my liquidation level, you know, right at 50K or below, or just below 50K. Like if your liquidation level is 45K and higher, like you're probably not safe. And so, you know, I'm anticipating a possible liquidation event, right? Because we haven't really had that in this little breakdown. And maybe we don't get the big liquidation event. Like this is a lot of red here and it looks a lot like this whole fucking run right here where we just kind of round it off, come back, test this trend line, bounce, round it off, come back, test this trend line. Are we going to bounce and do the same thing? Maybe we just crab up and keep, you know, it's like a slow grind up where we have these pumps and then 30% retraces and then pumps and then 30% retraces. Like maybe that's what the cycle's going to be like. I don't know. Just have to be prepared, guys. Um, I think the most interesting thing right now is probably Ethereum. Um, the chart looks way better than Bitcoin. Um, as you can see, it hasn't really deviated back into uh, the range like like Bitcoin has. So the chart looks a lot better. It looks like it's just like retesting all time high break. Because if we draw the weekly, this is a weekly level, this red line, right? Weekly close weekly close broke above it and now we're retesting it and it still hasn't broken below that's super bullish to me um you know if this is a proxy for the market things are looking good um if we look at the eth btc chart so we're comparing eth to bitcoin's price um if you're trading alts this is the the chart you want to be looking at right because if if your alt isn't outpacing Bitcoin, then there's no point in, if I can get this thing to load. Lovely, awesome. So yeah, we're testing on all time highs. Um, come on. Here we go. Okay, this is the, the ETH BTC chart. It's flagging and testing resistance at uh, on this trend line for the third time. You don't wanna trust a third tap and even a fourth tap. Um, this looks like it wants to get above 0.1, you know? Um, I think once this blue trend line breaks, this thing's gonna go to point one. And look at this chart. I mean, it's a massive head and shoulder slash just accumulation range that's lasted, that goes back to 2017 to now. Like once it breaks above this red line, like this thing could fly. What if this thing just goes to, you know, what if ETH goes to like 20K you know, 0.2 bit or point zero point two on the ETH BTC chart or something crazy like that. ETH would be completely unusable. And the reason I have been moving a lot of my Ethereum tokens to exchanges lately is because I look at this chart and I see that ETH could very possibly go parabolic in the near future or at least outpace Bitcoin. And this doesn't necessarily mean the ETH BTC chart doesn't necessarily mean that it's that if this breaks out, that price is going to keep going up for ETH. This just means that the price is holding up better than ETH, than Bitcoin is. So let's say that Bitcoin like drops off a cliff and dips to like 45K. Well, if Ethereum doesn't dip as hard, like this is gonna go up, but like price could still be going down and ETH BTC could still be going up, right? 
So I'm kind of paying attention to that too. Like just because this looks so good, it doesn't necessarily mean that prices are going to go up on the USD pair. It just means that it's going to outpace Bitcoin in the, the medium term, right? Or in the short term, medium term. So I think Ethereum is super interesting as a investment play or a short term trade play. In the near future, I think it could do really well. And of course, if I think Ethereum is going to do well, then I obviously think that other L1s are going to do really well. Um, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I hate how the Solana chart looks. Um, now Solana has outpaced Ethereum in every way this year. It's been the competing L1 that people have been migrating to. Um, tons of market share on it now. While well, Ethereum's kind of been just like a super bummer this year. Um, but if we look at this chart, I mean, just like we were talking about earlier, we had this established range, a deviation above it, and now we're back into the range, and we actually broke below this diagonal trend line, which like doesn't look great, right? I mean, if we eliminate this diagonal, it looks like it's just playing this mini range, right? And it's bouncing off this bottom, but like, man, this just doesn't look good to me. Um, you know, I think this could easily maybe, uh, you know, it looks like it broke down, retested it, and it broke down again. Maybe it's just a deviation below this trend line and we get a pop back up and then we, we're off to the races, you know? Could very well easily do that. This this yellow line would be your trigger, right? Get above it, hold it as support, touch it as support, long it, and then, you know, keep your stop below here. And if it deviates back into the range, then you hit your stop loss and it's not a good trade. Oh well. Um, otherwise, I like, if we look at the volume profile, this 160 area looks like a great buy for Solana if we do get this dip. Um, I will be bidding, you know, mid 160s down to 160. And if that fails to hold the mid range of this range, I would be looking for low 120s. Um, you know, I think, I don't think that's going to happen unless Bitcoin does something crazy and deviates to the bottom of its range back down to like 30K, which, you know, that seems like a long shot for me unless this bull run really is over. Um, or unless we get that, that crazy prolonged ranging thing that we talked about. If we look at the AVAX chart, which is another Ethereum competitor, um, it actually looks a lot better than Solana or Ethereum. Um, as you can see, it broke out of this alt previous all-time high and is in this upwards channel. Um, it does have like a bearish deviation, or excuse me, a bearish divergence on the RSI. Um, so this very well could drop to at least the bottom of the range, which would be like that $85 area, 80 to $85 area would be a really good buy on AVAX if we got it. Um, otherwise, it's just kind of hanging in at the mid range of this uh, channel. Um, it looks good to me. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, it's another play like Solana. It's faster. I like AVAX. I hold AVAX. Now let's talk about some metaverse coins, some coins that uh, seem to be the narrative right now. Um, if you've been in crypto, you know that like the narrative shifts relatively quickly and money flows with the narrative. So like, I mean, if you've been here for the year, you know that like dog coins were a narrative at one point, right? I mean, Dogi and Shiba Inu and basically any coin that had a dog in the name like went parabolic and was doing crazy good and then that narrative shifted right and then it was like layer ones and then solana and avax and everything was going bananas and like it was all about layer ones and then like now all of a sudden and then it was about nfts and then nfts were all the craze and like tons of money flowed into nfts and now nfts died down and now all the money's flowing into these metaverse coins, gaming coins, crypto gaming that actually incorporates some NFTs as well as like a token, you know, within their game, they've got like some sort of trading card thing or, or uh, other virtual reality game. Uh, Pyre is one of my metaverse plays. Um, it is on KuCoin. It's super low cap. Uh, Super low cap, I believe it has, oh, let's see, 50 million max supply, about 19 million total supply, it's still under a billion 
total market cap. Um, I just really like the coin. Uh, it is a gaming studio for um, crypto gaming earning and it is also a decentralized app platform so it isn't just one game it's actually a bunch of games and so it's a studio where they make a bunch of games with crypto it isn't just like one game it's a studio where they make multiple games and to me like that's like super valuable and you can see it in the chart um, just this steady growth like it hasn't really gone parabolic yet which is kind of crazy to me like I think it will at some point I think this will probably hit a hundred dollars sometime in the next year um, if the metaverse uh, narrative continues to play out and right now, I think it's a, a great play, small market cap. Like if you're in the metaverse, I think it, it could be a winner. Another one that I like is this Lock G. This is more of a high risk, high reward. Um, if we go to the Lock G, also another uh, gaming company, except Lock Game is a single game it's legends of crypto is what it stands for um, strategy based crypto card game that's easy to learn difficult to master but impossible to put down and i just did some research on it like i liked the the team i liked uh, the partners i liked i just like the narrative of metaverse coins and if it's a solid project that hasn't blown up yet which this one hasn't it's got 11 million total market cap so it's super new high risk high reward you can get it on kucoin or uniswap but like i just like the chart and i like the narrative right i like the, i like the fact that this is finding high high lows it's a super low cap gem i think just throwing a small amount of money in it and seeing what happens is is kind of my play on it um but i like this chart uh i was comparing this chart to sand which was another uh sand is a no here it is sand is another metaverse play and if we look at the sand chart over here on the left it looks like kind of eerily similar to this lock g g chart before it went parabolic and so like i'm kind of banking on this uh fractal you could say like this just continually making higher lows a super new project um, I think there's a good chance that this goes to at least three dollars um, So that's kind of my play on lock G um, What else do we got? Oh, yeah Atlas uh, star Atlas is a Solana based game This is another one that I got into um, Diversified into the gaming sector. I wanted to have gaming sectors from different chains um, You know, I don't want just all ethereum based chains and I don't want all Solana based uh, gaming, but I wanted something from all of them and this star atlas uh, Checks the box for a Solana game Super low cap still the chart looks good as you can see it had this round bottom and it's kind of up here testing all-time highs Right, but once this breaks out, I think it could be a very strong play um, It does have a DAO token called polis. So star atlas atlas is the main coin and polis is the governance token Both coins are kind of stuck in a range <clears throat> in their first consolidation range so if you're looking for like early play high risk high reward uh i urge you to take a look at uh, some of these gaming metaverse tokens because uh they could potentially play out if this narrative plays out right so uh yeah i just wanted to talk about a few of the metaverse tokens i'm in um take a look at btc ethereum i think ethereum looks really good right now obviously the charts look horrible all around um until we get a nice bounce but like ethereum's holding strong holding the highs strong 
he really doesn't want to break below 4k but anything could happen guys you got to prepare for the worst um i am positioning myself for a bullish week ahead i think that we've had so much blood this weekend and the end of the week and into this weekend that uh we're due for some relief um i think um with bitcoin we could see some relief maybe to like this back to this yellow line up here right B bounce at least up to this 50 56k 57 i'm thinking we could get up to this 58 maybe even retest 60. What I'd like to see us do is get back into this wedge, chop around here, and then eventually break above this wedge and start making our way towards 66K and all-time highs, right? I want us to have a nice healthy bounce like we saw here. I'm thinking that this could just be another consolidation pattern before we see the next bounce and run. You know, after this consolidation pattern, we saw a run from 41K to 69K. So maybe we'll see something similar, uh, you know, from 53K to 79K. That'd be nice. So we just have to be ready. Um, I think there's a very real possibility that this could break down from here and we get like a sharp liquidation, like down to like low 50s maybe, and then like bounce back, deviate above, back into this range, and then like work our way back up. So just be ready guys like i said i'm positioning myself for a bullish week i like the metaphors gaming tokens that i talked about i've actually consolidated a lot of my ethereum tokens in all my slower altcoins i have sold into cash um and actually moved a lot of that into some of these metaverse plays because i think they're going to be stronger um in the next leg of the bull run if we do get it and uh yeah that's that's about all i got guys uh keep an eye on ethereum it looks like the strong play right now if that if ethereum breaks out i think it could hopefully you know bring up the rest of the market usually when an eth does good that means good things for altcoins um but ultimately we really want to see bitcoin show some strength right because when bitcoin does well um the whole market tends to find a higher low and uh we had good things happen so just got to be patient guys um stay off the leverage you know unless we get like a major washout and a crazy wick it might be a good time to hit some leverage but until then stay safe guys i'll catch you in the next video all right peace out